Advanced partitioning techniques is a topic that is normally beyond the scope of beginner's course. However, we did want to include it in case some of you found it necessary to do manual partitioning to get Ubuntu set up on your system. Now, since we've shown you so many different flavors of Ubuntu in this chapter, we want you to know that it is possible to make a system that boots to several different versions of Ubuntu. To do that, you just may need to use some of these advanced partitioning techniques. As I'm sure you've noticed in these demonstrations of installing Ubuntu, in most of them we used a virtual box, which makes it easy for us to video the demonstration. You can always also install a virtual box on your Ubuntu Linux machine and use that to take a look at different flavors of Linux as well. These advanced topics are covered in much more detail in the Ubuntu Linux Basic Administration course, which is the next one of the next logical courses that you can take following this one. But for now, we want to show you some of the advanced partitioning techniques that are available during the install process. So let's take a look at what our options are. In the background, we're booting from our Ubuntu CD again. And this time we're going to explore some of the more advanced partitioning techniques. We're going to go into the manual partitioning section of the setup, which we have not seen yet. Now before we do that, I want to do a short review of the two partitioning schemes we've done previously. Let's look at a utility that can show us the drive partitioning scheme after the fact. We go to System, Administration, and the Disk Utility. Now here we see the Disk Utility, which can show us some useful information regarding how this hard drive is set up. Here's our drive. Notice it's the only drive in the system. It's the first drive in the system, therefore it's slash DEV slash SDA. The second drive would be slash DEV slash SDB. The third slash DEV slash SDC and so on. Now importantly, it shows us it's 160 gig. And if we click this first partition here, it's a 51 gig NTFS partition. It's bootable. What we did during the install is shown on the right here in this graphical display. We created an extended partition, Dev SDA2. See that? This is Dev SDA1. So there's Dev SDA2. This is one big extended partition that contains. Dev SDA5, which is our root. See, it says mounted at just a simple forward slash, that's root. And this is our swap file. 4.5 gig. Generally, your swap file would be equal to the size you have in memory. This machine probably has about 4 gig of memory, therefore, we have a 4.5 gig swap file. The intention is that we can take everything from our RAM and temporarily put it in that swap file. And that's Dev SDA6. So here is Dev SDA1, Dev SDA2, Dev SDA5, and Dev SDA6. There is no Dev SDA3 or 4. That's okay. This is just the way it's set it up. The important part is here's our Windows partition. Here's our extended partition that contains these two partitions, SDA5 and SDA6. Now that first example we just saw was a single disk that we split between Windows and Ubuntu Linux. So it was a single disk with multiple partitions on it to support two operating systems. And our Grub Boot Manager lived on that same disk. Obviously, it was the only disk in the system. This next 
look we're going to have we got the second system we install we use two separate discs we're going to see some similarities in the partitioning as well as some differences here we see our windows partition and as we did in the last exercise we're selecting on the left to view it it's a 160 gig ntfs partition obviously yours will be a different size if you use a different size drive now on our Linux drive, on our Ubuntu drive, here we have a a primary partition. Notice it is dev sdb1. Remember, sdb is the second drive in the system. Go back to the first drive. sda is the first drive. This has one single partition, which is sda1, and the type is an NTFS. These numbers, 0x07, uh, Linux uses numbers to determine the type of partition. Anyway, back to our second drive. We have a primary partition, dev sdb1, mounted at root. We then have an extended partition, dev sdb2. Extended partition, the only purpose of an extended partition is to hold other partitions. And in that partition, we have dev sdb5, which is our swap file. Now, keeping that in mind, in this next lab exercise, we're going to select the manual, and we're going to make these selections manually. The only extra thing we're going to have to do is set the grub bootloader to be set on the first drive because that is the drive the system boots off of. That is the drive that the BIOS looks at first to determine how the system's going to boot. Now unfortunately there's nothing in here that I can show you that shows us that the bootloader is on this drive. And there's nothing I can show you on the second drive right here that shows you that the bootloader is not on this drive. We will see it when we go through the manual settings. This time we're going to try some manual partitioning. We have a Windows installation already and we have a drive that we're recycling. We're going to do it all at once here. In the previous few labs, we saw we used the install alongside operating system. In one of them, we split the hard drive, we used a single hard drive between Windows and Ubuntu. In another one, we added a second hard drive. In this one, we have a separate hard drive that we're going to use for Ubuntu. And Windows is running on the first hard drive. This time, though, we're going to try and do this manually. So you're going to select manual. And here we see our existing partitions. This is SDA1, which has our windows on. We don't want to mess with that partition at all. Here's our SDB. This has an older install of Linux on it. Now, here again, device for bootloader installation. We're telling it SDA because that is the drive that the uh, bootloader is on. I'm going to delete this partition. So we're starting with basically an empty drive on SDB. We're going to select SDB here. We're going to add a partition of 155 gig. A primary partition. We're using external four and we're going to mount this on root. We 
we're going to add in our free space here a logical partition with the remaining space. We're going to make that be the swap area. So we set our root partition and our swap partition. The bootloader device for the bootloader will be the boot drive, which is device SDA, our first drive in our system. Not SDA1, not SDB, and not SDB1. We want it to be on SDA. And we'll click install now and we'll see what happens. Now we're not going to show all the details of this install. We've seen that before in other demo labs. So we're going to fast forward to the end. Here's our reboot screen. Let's see what happens. Remove our disk. And there's our grub. Very good. At that time, it worked very well because the grub was installed on the first drive, which is the Windows drive. Well, we should see our new Ubuntu install booting. There we go. It's a beautiful thing. There's our login screen. Oh, welcome, Bongos. Enter our password. Welcome, Ubuntu Music. operating system installed. Let's make sure our window still boots. And here's our boot loader. Select windows. And there's our windows. Isn't that wonderful? Alrighty, the procedures we just showed you in this videotape are now laid out in detail in the instructions below.